Thank you all for coming for the opening of this fantastic new building in Baltimore. I'm really pleased to have everybody here. As many of you know, these big projects, they don't happen without a tremendous amount of support. Lots of team players, great city to be in, and a lot of effort from a lot of people here. And I'm sure I'll forget a bunch of them through the process. But, but this, what's interesting about this project is it's really about creating a space and creating a place. And when we started off with this project, we knew right away that we wanted to create a neighborhood. And Baltimore is a city that really is a lot of different neighborhoods. And what makes it exciting to live in Baltimore is the mix of people, the mix of architecture, the mix of different things going on in the city that make it a truly vibrant urban place. And our mayor focused on a long time ago getting more and more residents back into our city. You know, we lost a bunch over a period of years, but when you look around Baltimore, you can look at it one way or you can look at it and see all the excitement we have to offer, this fantastic waterfront, great, great people, great shops, great restaurants, great companies, and it was a great place to invest. So we started the development of the Harbor Point project to really do just that, to go out and develop in it. We started out with a great partner in Honeywell, Chris French is here from Honeywell, that helped us acquire the land as we bought it from them. And it was a brownfield site, and it was a thoughtful cleanup of a brownfield site so it could be built on and have a great new development as opposed to building out and cutting down trees out in the county somewhere. You build on the urban projects downtown. We then brought in a great partner with J.P. Morgan, Hillary Bowie's here at J.P. Morgan, who came in as our partner on this project, the first residential building and part of this big Exelon project for Harvest Point. Great investment, great to bring them to Baltimore, and to really stay true as our partners to get this project not only built, but to see how it develops going forward. We also had architects of uh, B.D. Harvey, Ta Harvey's here, uh, M&T Bank, I saw um, Chris Beach here roaming around, around before, lots of other lenders that were on the project. The city of Baltimore, BDC, has always been our partner on our projects as we develop them. And really a tremendous support. Also, I'd be remiss not to mention just our team with, with jo Jody Clark, Chris Mfume, uh, Jonathan Flesher, Marco Greenberg, Tim Pula. Who else am I missing? Charlie. 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 I don't even know Charlie, Char but I know you missed him. Charlie's had, had, a, had a, lot of, a lot of headaches with getting this thing pulled together and done. And tons of other folks to get the project done. But we also made commitments when, when we moved forward on this project. We committed to our anchor tenant, Exelon, to build a fantastic building. We'll be opening that up shortly, and you'll see thousands of jobs move in here into this building. We committed to retailers around, which you start to see some of them with West Elm, Four Power Yoga down the street, Honey Grow, and others moving in. Um, and a lot of excitement in retail really creating a destination. But we also committed to the citizens of Baltimore to do some things. Um, first of all, we, we've always focused on MBE, WBE you know, our, in our city. Uh, we'll meet our goals. We'll have about $60 million in participation in this building, uh, which, is, which I think is a, is a nice number. We want to see that continue to grow. We also focused on local hiring. And I think over 50% of the new jobs were all local Baltimore City hiring. But we went beyond these things, and, and each time you do one of these projects, you think of how to be more creative. As you look around this building, one of the things that I think looks great is the artwork, and all of the artwork in here was done locally. We actually just went out with a guy named Carl Conley, I went to local artists who brought in great pieces and presented, and actually took a lot of pride knowing that this was going to be a Baltimore-based art collection in this building, and we plan to carry that through the rest of the project. So again, it's focusing on those commitments uh, for our city. Things like um, housing are really important. We've always believed in a mixed neighborhood. This building will bring 103 new residents to the city. 45 people are already living here with 62% of units already leased. But we're also doing a landmark first uh, that was started with the mayor and our council president of focusing on how do we fund inclusionary housing. So this will make one of the first payments into the city's inclusionary housing fund that we think over the life of this project will be over $3 million. So lots of things to get done. Um, but again, the last piece of the puzzle is they wouldn't happen without the support of a great city and a fantastic administration. And our mayor, um, focusing on these projects, focused on the big things in our city, you know, cleaning it up, making it safe, but also making it a better place for all of the residents here. And that sometimes that takes tough decisions, and it takes focusing on projects that are really big that some might look at and say it won't benefit me directly, but you have to look beyond and say, what does it do for the entire city? And I think that's where our mayor focused on this city. We had a very challenging time getting through a TIF process, but everybody hung together. And now you'll see that everybody will come down and say, wow, that was a really good idea. I mean, look at all the people that are living here, look at all the jobs that are created, and obviously look at all the taxes that are paid. So with that, I introduce our mayor, and I thank her for supporting us on this project and others. And we intend to do a few more as we go forward, so thank you.
Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is my pleasure to be here at this beautiful, beautiful project. And it's good to see you, Mike. And just, I'm so proud of the work uh, that you and your team are doing. Um, I want to thank my Deputy Mayor, Colin Tarver, Deputy Deputy Mayor, <laughs> Leon Pinkett. Uh, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned it was a difficult project. Um, to you know the, 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 the challenges that we had getting it through. Because sometimes I think when you come to something like this and it makes so much sense, people forget uh, the, uh, the uphill climb uh, that it was and the, the, the tough work and the collaboration and the tenacity that it takes to uh, get bold things done in Baltimore. I made up my mind when I became mayor that I was going to bring 10,000 families into the, into the city and it thrills me to see this project and so many more uh, throughout the city that are helping me to realize that dream of making Baltimore a vibrant, uh, a vibrant city again, a growing city again. Uh, it's no mistake that Baltimore is one of the top 10 places in the country for tech startups, one of the top 10 destinations for millennials, uh, that, that we are seen by this next generation as a city on the move. We just got another designation earlier this week for our, in recognition of our arts and our culture scene. This project and the other things that you're working on in the city contribute to that sense that we are a city with an incredible future. So I want to thank you for all of your hard work. Uh, I know I'm forgetting. Who am I forgetting, Colin? Everybody? Um, but I'm just, I just, to those who have a glass, I wanted to, to raise a glass uh, to, yay, to raise a glass to Baltimore's promising future. Cheers. 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 Five, four, three. 